anger is a strong emotion and one that we often have a difficult relationship with. In this week's video, we're answering a question from Paul who had a great comment under uh, one of my YouTube videos on male empaths. And he asks a question about anger. He said, so when you talk about righteous anger in young men, I've seen myself after some awakening last year with some anger mixed with empathy and other positive emotions. So what can protect me against this righteous anger towards those who abuse others or animals and not allow it to delude me? The direction of anger is positive, but how do I not fall into a tunnel vision, angry presentation? That's a trap I'm afraid of. I've seen some people fall into an angry type of dogma thinking they're awakened. I feel like we can have a righteous anger in order to protect others, but how do we balance it? This is a great question, Paul. Thank you for answering. And that's what we're going to answer in this video. Welcome back. Leslie Huddert here. I am a spiritual guide and healer, acupuncturist, and I help empaths, healers, and seekers really release the trauma trapped in their body without years of therapy, right? Really honing in on the wiring, the technical aspect of how the mind-body system relate and actually release things from the physical body. And one of the things that is often sticky is anger. So let's dive into Paul's question. There are maybe three key points that can really guide us here and to know how do I honor what is a natural, what I would call the sort of righteous side of anger, which is a natural trigger when something has been violated. When we know there are these sort of universal morals of treating other people, of honoring the oneness of things, of um, really honoring the interconnectedness of all things. And when that, when people violate that, some of us are natural in Chinese medicine, we call it the wood element or the wood official of the liver, which is sort of like the general says, that is not right. And we should feel that wave of a righteousness sort of come up and say, hey, discernment, this shit ain't right. That in itself is what I'm calling in this instance, righteous anger. Now, what's missing here and what we need to bring in is the context. Number one key point is what we really need to protect us from allowing the righteous anger, but not getting dogmatic and angry and essentially becoming the actors that we despise by fighting fire with fire in this particular way, in a mind diluted way, is one, we need an overarching spiritual worldview. Now, this is what we help people craft in my um, practical spirituality training. We call it our working spiritual hypothesis. But essentially, number one, for your spiritual worldview, you need to have a strong sense of how you answer the big questions of reality. What is really going on here? What is really real with a capital R? And until you answer those questions, you will sometimes be thrown about in the waves of three-dimensional reality. Because the truth is that, at least from a, a non-dualistic perspective, is that there is a greater reality behind the scenes. But as embodied beings with minds who are sort of confined by however you define that in your worldview, whether it's your karma, what's true is that we have mind obscurations. We have things in the way of seeing what is true and real. And we are trapped in this three-dimensional life, which is sort of like a video game that has a lot of suffering in it. So unless we can be in the world, but not of the world, unless we are grounded and affirmed in what we know is really going on here, even though it looks different in this three-dimensional reality, we will always fall to into this trap of getting sucked in to this anger, whether it's that or any of the other negative emotions. So number one is you need to work on behind the scenes, your spiritual worldview in that way. And that's something that we help with. I'll put a link down below. If you need support in crafting your practical spirituality of step-by-step -step spirituality, you can really rely on to answer these questions and to actually be functionally different in your life, rather just in your mind. Number two is to remember that we are always playing an inner and an outer game. The inner world game is like we've discussed our sort of spiritual worldview of what we know is really happening. And in the outer world, it's how we are called to play the video game of life. Now this idea of 
playing life as a video game. This came from one of my spiritual teachers, Joan Shivar Pita Harrigan. And she would say, life, you want to play life like a video game. You are trying to win the video game. You're trying to get Mario to the next level, but at the same time, you don't ever forget that it's a video game. So in that way, let's give an example. For example, you notice that people are um, really abusing other people, abusing animals in that way, in a way that stirs your righteous anger that you know is not right. It's not honoring of these deep universal truths. So in your inner world aspect, from your spiritual worldview, you might explain that with something like, I understand that these people are doing things because they themselves are suffering. They may, probably aren't evil, uh, broken people, but they are deeply split off from themselves. That one must in order to, even though maybe I believe in my inner world that all people are inherently have a goodness, that sometimes things happen because of wounding or karma, that people are separated from that knowing. And so they commit these acts that are harmful to others and also to themselves. So I understand that in my inner world and in my outer world, I ask what we could say is a dharmic question. Dharma, D-H-A-R-M-A, sometimes translated as like that which is mine to do. And I ask a question when I get in my outer world video game, I ask, is this mine to do? I recognize it is not right. That's my discernment. I use my inner world understanding to understand why it's happening. And in my outer world, I ask the question, am I called to be an actor in this way? Am I called to intervene in a situation where someone is being abused? Am I called to be more of someone who helps with a cause in a certain way? Sometimes we are and sometimes we aren't. The last part is to understand what I like to talk about sometimes as the three businesses. There are three businesses. There is your business, other people's business, and God in the universe's business. And sometimes to deal with negative emotions and especially anger, we have to ask the question, where am I getting stuck? Am I in somebody else's business? Am I trying to change something about the outer world in a way where my mind is deluded and thinking that God needs me as his secretary? So when we go back to number one, when we understand the deeper nature of reality, we can be very good players at the video game because we're keeping things in the right business. Sometimes things will arise in my outer world where I am called to take action. And other times I'm called to have discernment about other people's suffering and do my own business over here without intervening. And sometimes I'm left to an understanding that this outer world is a realm of suffering. There is a story about uh, the Buddha and a woman who was distraught because she had just lost her infant who had died. And she brought this infant to the Buddha and said, please, I know that you can do anything. Can you please bring back my child? And compassionately, uh, the Buddha said, yes, I can do that. But first, what we'll need is I'll need you to bring a grain of rice, just a single grain of rice, but it has to be from a household that has never lost anyone to death. And so the one's like, great, no problem. I can do that in her grief. And you know, mother frenzy of grief went out and was like, I can save my child. All I need to do is get this one thing and the master will make it happen. And she goes from house to house to house asking first, have you ever lost anyone to death? Has there any been, and in every household, everybody had lost someone. And so she was unable to find a grain of rice from any household. And by the time she came back, she had also grown in the realization that death and loss and suffering is a part of being human. There is no spiritual or religious tradition on the face of the planet that can deny that, but our mind likes to fight it. So part of this understanding of clarifying, of knowing how to wield anger and knowing whether it's righteous or it's an actually internal defect of our mind, a poison of the mind, is understanding the game that we're playing. Understanding the inner world from our spiritual worldview, our working spiritual hypothesis, and understanding the outer world and what it really is and what it isn't. So I hope that helps. 
for clarity. I really bow to you asking this question. It really shows that you are really looking inward and trying to really have the, the most helpful and compassionate expression of the things that you feel arising within you, which is a very wonderful thing. Thank you, thank you all for your attention and watching and for submitting your questions. You can always leave them in the comments below. If you have a takeaway, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I get and read those comments. Thank you so much. You are a soul with a body and your spiritual journey is of paramount importance. May you be happy and free. This is Leslie Hutter and I will see you next time.